Alright, I'm just gonna start this off by saying that this video isn't really like the other 100 days I've made up until this point. There's a lot going on here in terms of what there is to do on the map, but there's only one boss, so as the title suggests, I kinda just played here for 100 days. So of course I still have a small list of tasks I want to accomplish before the video ends. Beginning with number one, I have to fight the boss on all three difficulties with different unique creatures, because fighting with Rexes all the time is boring. Number two, build a really cool house that pretty much speaks for itself. And number three, tame all of the unique DLC creatures that this island has to offer, including one in particular that I'm really, really not looking forward to. Also, if you guys help me hit 20,000 subscribers, I'll start a channel discord. With that all said, enjoy the video. Oh my goodness, guys. Guys, it's day one. I'm, so, I'm so excited. I can't wait, guys. I, I, I'm so excited. Yeah, yeah, you show that tree. Once I had gotten a bit situated with some tools, I went around and killed some dilos for their meat. I wandered into the forest a little ways and came across this glorious rock, which I thought would be a great building spot, until these bugs attacked me and then I changed my mind very fast. I began constructing my base until the seagull started bothering me. Also, I don't know what it is with me and just being nutty when it comes to killing seagulls, but I should have an e-girl girlfriend by now. Where is she? Where is my e-girl girlfriend? Later that night, I found this green drop which had some wooden structures inside of it. Yeah, that's about it. I began day two by upgrading some of my floors to wood. I was feeling pretty productive, so I got started on making narcotic sand stimulant as well as setting up a forge and a smithy. I decided to go exploring a little bit, and then there was a rex right next to my house. I got away somehow, but later I tried to tame this parasaur and it got away from me and ran straight at the stupid thing. You know, the intelligence levels on some of these creatures remind me of the people I used to deal with at my customer service job. The Rex aggroed on me a second time and not even the water could save me. My second attempt at taming a parasaur also ended in Rex carnage. I was able to get my stuff back because the thing was distracted, but bro, just leave me alone. I tried exploring a bit more, but ended up in the snow for whatever reason. I don't know why I thought that was a good idea. I narrowly managed to escape freezing to death and made my way back home. Day two, I finally managed to tame myself a parasaur. Later in the forest, I found this lone raptor and decided I would try to tame him. Wait a minute, he's not alone. He's an alpha. Oh, for the love of... My Parasaur put up a brave fight, but it went down, but not after taking out most of the pack. Once the raptor had tamed, I went out exploring and came across this lighthouse with a little cave underneath. I started exploring the cave a little bit, knowing that there would be creatures, and at the first sign, I turned tail and ran. Although, I guess I went a different direction, because I ended up on this cliff. Then I fell off a cliff and died. At least my raptor was safe. While I was running back, I got completely arced again and got killed by a raptor. Attempt 3, third time's the charm, right? Well, third time would be the charm if I didn't run to a completely wrong location. I did end up retrieving my stuff and my raptor and made my way back home. Day 4, I made a small journey over to the nearby mountain so I could get myself some crystal. For this playthrough, I was using the Dino Storage mod, which is pretty straightforward. It's like cryopods, but broken. On my way back, though, I accidentally got too close to this alpha raptor and the rest is history. Oh, and what's that I hear? Background music? Oh, another death montage must be incoming.
the love of God! Eventually, the Alpha Raptor decided to go somewhere else and I was able to get my stuff back. And what do you know, as soon as I got home, that stupid Rex was back and I had to kite it away again. I was starting to get sick of this place. I definitely wasn't gonna live here, so at the very end of the day, I placed a raft. Days 5 and 6 were mostly spent crafting structures. Of course, I wasn't gonna let it just be any normal boring raft. I needed it to be cool. And at the end of day 6, I began building. On day 7, I'm, uh, still building. Day 8, I finally finished my flagship and named it the SS Dingus Pingus. I had it equipped with a forge, storage, a smithy, everything. And most of the rest of the afternoon was spent moving all of my possessions onto the boat. Day 9, the SS Dingus Pingus set sail. That's got to be the best part I've ever seen. So it would seem. I ended up making a pit stop to tame this parasaur because I still needed a berry collector and all my other ones had died. I also tamed this raptor, just because it was a high level and it was just there. I also crafted my first soul traps, and I'm gonna be honest, it felt a little too overpowered. It sort of became more than a pit stop at the end of the day because I tamed these two high level pteranodons, a male and a female, and I could begin breeding. After both of the pteranodons had tamed up on day 10, I placed them both on my boat and began sailing away again. I tried to stick to the shallows as much as I could because there were lead scythes all around and I had my first attack. Fortunately I was right next to the shallows so I didn't take too much damage. And as I was sailing inland, another lead scythes came out of nowhere. I survived that one too, but boy I might have needed to change my pants after that. At day 11 I discovered that there was a decent source of metal and crystal on the island I had parked right next to. It was also relatively safe here so I made sure to take advantage of that. Finally I reached the mouth of a river and I decided I would settle down there for the time being. I got to work building a dock but then an ichthyornis once again decided to disturb me so I went sicko mode on it. This is the second time I've done this in this video. Nah, for real, where's my gamer girlfriend? On day 12, I finally finished my dock. It was a very simple piece of work, but I was still happy with it nonetheless. I also tamed this high-level Dilo because it was cute and I wanted a pet, I guess. At the end of the day, I took my Pteranodon inland so I could start scouting a new base location. And then I found this raised piece of land. It was perfect. Day 13, I returned to the Dingus Pingus so I could prepare for the move. I also realized that before I could start building, I would need something that could collect a lot of resources. And I always default to a beaver for this, but this time I decided I would get a mammoth. Hold be damned, I was going to have myself a mammoth. I got sidetracked though and decided to go after some cinema crops. And if you don't know what they are, they're basically flying backpacks, that's all you need to know. I found two I really liked and tamed the first one, pretty much no problem, but the second one got scared and flew away, so I gave up. I made the trip to the snowy area on one of my pteranodons and found two. One of them was a high level, and so I killed his friend, naturally. After I knocked that big boy out, I went back to the Dingus Pingus so I could make myself some more Trank Arrows. Day 14 I began looking for a Dodicarus. My mammoth finished taming up and I named him Elon Tusk. I know, I know. I'm just too funny sometimes. I continued my search for a Dodic and in my notes it just says, Looking for a Dodic Part 2. I, I just couldn't leave that out of the video. Eventually I did find a level 145 and knocked it out. It was a pretty dangerous area, so I built some spike walls and just AFK'd while I waited for it to tame. Oh my goodness, can you please tame? I'm tired, I wanna go home. Ah, <sighs> that's more like it. Next up, I tamed a moss shop so I could get myself a bunch of fiber, and then I got to work clearing the whole place. Well, not the whole place, just a lot of space. This house was gonna be big, I had a grand idea. That was totally, definitely my own. A16, I began building the foundation to my manor, but halfway through I realized that I was having issues with the mesh, so I would have to build it somewhere else. Ugh, now I gotta clear more space. Alright, now this spot should be good. 
I think. Well, I hope so, because I'm going to spend the rest of the day building this. Day 18, I finally ran out of stone, and this was a problem because I would need to take my dodic to farther out areas in order to collect more. It would be dangerous to travel it on just the dodic, so I went back to the dingus pingus so I could make more trank arrows. I would need an RG. After that, I set out looking for one on my pteranodon, and it didn't take me too long to find this level 100 with a good weight stat. Unfortunately, after going through the effort of knocking it out safari style, while I was waiting for it to tame, a snake got to it first. Fine, you stupid snake. I didn't even want that one anyway. I guess Ark felt bad for me, because then I found this level 130, also with the good weight stat, and I was able to knock it out safely. The RG finished taming on day 19, but I didn't have the chitin and keratin I needed to make a saddle, so I went on a big, murderous run at home, so I finally had what I needed. And then, only then, I was finally able to take my dodic around for a stone run. After that stone run was completed, I would spend the following three days just building. Day 23, I really needed a break from all of that building, so I did what any normal bored person would do. I went to the volcano! I did make sure to scout the wyvern trench a little bit, but the egg levels I could see were just absolutely terrible, so I didn't even bother. Now, something that was definitely on my shopping list was a magmasaur egg, so I went over and checked out their cave, and all of the eggs were level 20. If I didn't have the cinema crops, it would be a very dangerous situation, but I was able to hover above all of them, and they weren't even able to hit me with their fireballs! Nice. I grabbed myself a few magmasaur eggs and made my way out, and that's when I realized that this wyvern trench was actually a lot longer than I thought it was. Naturally, I did a bit more poking around, just so I could see if I could find any higher level eggs, and I ended up finding a level 160 poison egg. I didn't really have any good methods of getting it, but I did have a somewhat stupid plan. I aggroed the wyvern nearby with my pteranodon and tried to make my way out, and ended up killing my pteranodon and I thought it was all over, you know, it being a lightning wyvern and all, but then it aggroed on this brontosaurus and I was safe. Somehow. Using my cinema crops, I dove down into the wyvern trench and nabbed the egg. And honestly, the escape wasn't going as bad as I thought it would have until I hit the ground. Then I knew it was Jover. <laughs> There were some spawn locations pretty close by, so it was time to just run in naked and see if I could make my way out with my stuff. Also, why do these wyverns just puppy guard the trench? That's so unfair. And, as it turns out, the wyverns can still pick up an egg being placed into your inventory, regardless of where you got it from. So I had to run, and I didn't make it far. After a couple more failed attempts at being stealthy to get the stuff, the wyverns, I guess, lost interest? They just weren't there anymore, I guess they left, but... I was able to get my stuff and just booked it. No competition either. I guess they had gone back into the cave and were too stupid to get around the rocks. It was kind of cool that I now had a wyvern egg to my name, but uh, no good way of getting home because my pteranodon and cynomacrops were now dead. Since taming another pteranodon was for losers, I decided I would just try and leg it. I know, that sounds like a terrible idea, but it turned out surprisingly well. I managed to make it around the redwoods too without being noticed by anything spooky, but the worst part was probably the swamp. I had to cross this river. That was not a fun experience, let me tell you. What, with all the sarcos and piranhas running around? Wait, they can't run if they don't have legs. They were swimming around. They are swimming. At the end of the day, I made my way up to the top of this mountain with some parachutes and just parachuted the rest of the way to my base. I did it! I had a wyvern egg! I'm suffering from success, truly. Day 25, I needed more cinema crops, so I fast traveled over to the Dingus Pingus and then made my way around looking for some high levels. It took some time, but I managed to tame a max level 150 and another level 60. After that, I just, just returned home and started building. Not much to say there. And at this point, as I'm editing this, I realize how ambitious I got with my build because I spent day 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, and 32 just building. Well, minus some material runs, of course, but that, that kind of counts as the building process in my eyes. Going off of like this summer mansion tutorial I found on YouTube, and boy, 
I, I completely underestimated the time it would take to make this. Especially when I got to the point where I started to need more windows. Oh man, oh man, I needed so many windows. Not only that, but cementing paste was one of the hardest things to get for me right now for whatever reason. I just had nothing. None of it. But you know what? This still had potential to turn into the coolest base I had ever built. Just you wait, guys. The pain. The pain, it will be worth it. A33, I forgot to record until it was night time, but that's okay, because all I did was, you know, build. I did, however, start making some ammo and tranks after I started recording, so there's that. A34, I was... <sighs> building. And oh wow, we surprise, surprise, I was still building on day 35, but at least something else interesting happened. I set up a bunch of standing torches so I could begin hatching my wyvern egg. Because I didn't go through all that pain and effort to not have myself a wyvern this time. It was just, it's out of the question. On day 36, I began it by going on another metal run. That afternoon, my poison wyvern had finished hatching and I named him Splat. Now that I had my little baby man, I decided I wanted some wyvern milk so I could actually feed him. So I headed up to the volcano biome so I could start building a wyvern trap cage thingy. To, you know, milk her. Ayo, pause. I finished the cage on day 37 and began trying to lure this female fire wyvern into it, except she was not cooperating and ended up killing me and my pteranodon. The cinemacrops I had there died as well, and so I returned on my RG and managed to tank the damage and close the door, finally successfully trapping it. The torpor on it wasn't too high, so I had no problems knocking it out. Day 38, I was back to building once again while I raised my wyvern. The only other interesting thing that happened that day was fighting this centipede, which nearly got my mashups killed. Skill issue. A39 was the same, except fortunately no centipede encounter. A40 I kept building, but fortunately I got a distraction because my wyvern had finished growing, so for the first time since Scorched Earth I was able to go on a joyride. A41 I needed sulfur so I could feed my magmasaurs as they were growing. And actually, as it turns out, I had no idea why I didn't notice this before, but there was actually a little desert area to this map. Wait, did I say little desert? Because I meant big desert. Like, really big. After that, I paid another visit to the Wyvern Trench. Now that I had myself a very strong steed, it was nothing but slaughter as soon as I got there, and I also made sure to keep an eye out for any high-level eggs, which I did end up finding, a level 175 Lightning Egg. I also found a level 180 Fire Wyvern Egg, but, you know, I prefer the Lightning Wyverns. Day 41, I didn't come back home with all of the eggs, I left them in a chest near that Wyvern Trapping Cage because there were just too many and I was encumbered. My Magmasaur had finished hatching and I could finally start raising it. My Lightning Wyvern also hatched, I named him Zappo. Now it was time to go retrieve those eggs from that storage box I mentioned seconds earlier. I don't know why I did this, half of them weren't even worth it. That one female Fire Wyvern that was still in the cage aggroed of course as soon as I got close and for whatever reason I left Splat just sitting there right next to her. On passive. Unfortunately, he did not live to survive the tale. And actually, now that I think about it, I have no idea whether or not Splat was on passive because this Fire Wyvern just kind of died. Uh... Yeah, I really don't know what happened here. And remember what I said about Wyverns detecting when an egg transfers to your inventory? Well, I guess that happened because I was murdered very soon afterward. And now it was time to go get myself another Cinema Crops because, well... The one I was holding when I died wasn't going to stay alive for very long. My hunt for Xenomacrubs continued into day 43, and I lucked out when I found a high level male and female, so now I had a breeding pair. The rest of the day was spent raising my little wyvern and building my house, because of course I was still building my house. Day 44, I was still raising and building, although at one point my magma sore I guess just ran off somewhere? That was a bummer. Now I needed to go get another one. Day 45, I returned to that cage box near the wyvern trench just so I could retrieve anything I may have forgotten the last time. While I was there, of course I made sure to avenge Splat. I missed the man. I began hatching some of the newer eggs after I returned home and, well, continued building. Day 46, my wyverns had hatched and I did a little bit more building. Oh, uh, will it ever end? I did, in fact, need more Magmasaur eggs, though, so I paid another visit to their little cave and grabbed all the level 20 eggs I could find, because those were the only ones I could find. Day 47, I was hatching and raising as per usual, and, um, let me take building for $500. That was a Jeopardy reference. <laughs> 
<sighs> I'm so smart. A48 in drum roll. Wait for it. I'm still building. Hooray! <laughs> <laughs> oh, and speaking of crying, Snickers ended up dying to a snake. Day 49, I finished the gate I had been building to the only little piece of land that slopes up onto my little island. I continued raising after that of course, but I also started building a pen where I would keep all my boss fighting dinos. The power breaker in my house went off on day 50, when uh, I had been productive that day unfortunately. I had gone on another small metal run so I could make myself a magnosaur saddle later on, and I set up a fabricator as well, but obviously you can't see that. Later on that day I raided the beaver dams that were somewhat close to my base, and at the very end of the day I crafted the magnosaur saddle. Day 51 I went on a metal and crystal run with my new magnosaur. After I returned and was waiting for that metal to smelt, I began working on the pen some more and added some more windows to my house. The entirety of day 52 was dedicated to building windows! Hooray! Anybody else who's built with a lot of greenhouse walls and survival knows my pain. You know my pain! Day 53 was a momentous day. I had placed the final window and my house was officially done. No more. It's over, Mr. Frodo. We did it. I celebrated the occasion by going on another massive metal run with my Magnusaur. Say that five times fast. Day 54, I finished the metal run that I had started on day 53. Then I went looking for a Megalodon. I found a decent level and knocked it out and then ran around to collect everything I needed to make it a saddle. After it finished taming later that day, I went around on it killing things so I could get it some levels. Day 55, I used my Megalodon to murder this Basilosaurus for its bountiful supply of oil. What can I say? I'm an American. It's what we do. I was pretty bored later on, so I decided I would get a change of scenery and go explore the desert. I got myself loads of organic polymer and chitin thanks to the metric butt ton of mantises that spawned down there. When I returned Turned home, a bunch of the metal had finished smelting, so I made myself an industrial grill and an industrial cooker. Hmm, you know what? I need more electronics. Let's go ahead and add a refrigerator and start setting up electricity while we're at it. Day 56, I set up irrigation to my base so my industrial cooker could actually have a water supply. I then tamed a Pheomia so it could have something that would poop on my command for fertilizer. After that, I began to build myself a large greenhouse so it could finally start growing veggies. The order had spoiled me. On Lost Island, there were no veggies that I could just go pick up whenever I wanted to, so I had to grow them myself. Day 57, I finished my greenhouse and now I needed to fertilize the soil, Mr. Fiomia. I have called you here for one reason. You know what to do. The rest of the day I just built this bridge. I don't know. I would actually use it later though, so it wasn't completely useless. Day 58 would bring me nothing but torture and suffering once again, because I tried to tame this dire bear and it just got killed by monkeys. Eh, that's fine, I'll just go find another one. I actually found this high level Spino and knocked it out, but then I accidentally hit it with lightning while I was trying to defend it from this Paraceratherium. I built a trap around it and then went looking for another dire bear. Once I found it though, huh, wow, would you look at that, it got killed by monkeys again. Wow, I can't believe my luck. How cool. These monkeys are really something else. After the Spino woke up on day 59, I knocked it out again and tamed it this time with 100% efficiency. Well, not 100% because I used prime meat, but you know what I mean. I figured it would be a good boss fighting creature. I don't usually fight with Spino, so I started looking for a female, but couldn't find one. All right, Mr. Bear, third time's the charm. Surely you won't die on me this time. Oh, good grief. After three infuriating failed attempts at taming a dire bear, I built this pen at home and then carried a dire bear all the way from the redwoods back to my base to drop it in here, and that's where I knocked it out. Okay, well, I didn't actually knock it out until day 60, but those are the finer details that nobody cares about. It did get really close to dying because I was using Trank arrows, so I had to switch to Trank darts. I don't know why I just wasn't using those in the first place, so uh, 
Yeah. I went out to grab a bunch of honey after that so it would tame with a higher efficiency. Later that day, I tamed a female counterpart to my male using the same pen strategy and it got a horrible taming bonus with its stats. Eh, whatever. That would be fine. For now, I'd just breed them anyway. The rest of the day would be spent on a stone run so I could make more cementing paste that night. Day 61, I was looking for a high level female again so hopefully this time I would get a better taming bonus. Conveniently, I did find this yellow drop which had a Mastercraft Dire Bear saddle in it, which needed, of course, a lot of cementing paste to make. Man, why did I choose bears? Out of all the things I could have chosen, I chose bears! I did end up finding a female Dire Bear later, though, and, you know, did the thing. The rest of this day would be spent grinding too, except this time it was gunpowder. The bear finished taming on day 62, and this time, thankfully, I got a good bonus. I once again continued my search to find my spino a wife, but I couldn't find anything, so I just went back to raiding the beaver dams. After that, I went and murdered stuff at the wyvern trench just because I could, before returning home just in time to witness the birth of my first baby bear. Baba Booey. Day 63 guys, stop the presses cause I just found myself a max level female spino. I was not prepared to tame one right away so I went home to grab everything I needed to knock it out. I started using Trank darts and I already knew I wouldn't have enough to knock it out. Good thing I brought Trank arrows. Oh wait, where's my crossbow? Hold on, let me go get that real quick. I went AFK while I waited for her to tame and once she did I brought her home and let her do the devil's tango with her significant other. I just let them do their thing and began harvesting my crops. Day Day 64 began with a stone and flint run. At home I crafted some stimulant and collected the prime jerky I'd been making this whole time so I could make myself some mind wipes for saddle crafting. I had everything I needed to craft all the mammoth saddles I would need for the boss fight, and uh, for whatever reason I forgot to mention that I got this blueprint. Eh, whatever. I also crafted a bear saddle. Later on I set up some air conditioners in my soon-to-be hatchery and birthed another bear. At the very, very end of the day, I set off for my first cave. Day 65 would be a large caving run beginning with the cave with the artifact of the hunter. It was a little confusing to navigate, but there wasn't really anything that could kill me in there because my dire bear was unrivaled in power. Next was the artifact of the pack, and this one was not okay. I came to this very large opening at one point with an ungodly amount of centipedes. Whose idea was that? To put this many centipedes in one room. I don't know why I thought it was a good idea to kill them, but at least I got a bunch of chitin from that, so that's good. I healed my bear and continued into the cave, and when I got to the artifact room, now there was an ungodly amount of spiders. Now, spiders are a lot more squishy, so I was in a lot less danger, but still, really wild card? Really? The last cave of the day would be the Artifact of the Strong, which was in this Aberration Cave. Awesome, right? No, wait, there are Aberration Raptors. You remember what Aberration Raptors can do? If my bear didn't have a sudden craving for raptor flesh, I would be a very sad man there. Day 66 began with me grabbing the Artifact of the Clever. The cave was pretty straightforward, so there's not much to say there. On my way back to my base, I was passing over the Ice Wyvern Trench, and no, I didn't have any fur on me, so it was already freezing to death, but you know what? Let's just see if there's anything good in there. I did find a level 150 egg, and got it, and got out of there. And I nearly died of cold, but oh, that was close. Very close. Once I was home, I began crafting some scuba gear and made some more air conditioners so I could begin hatching my ice wyvern egg. There was no time to stop there because now I was on my way to the desert to go get the artifact of the brute. It took a little bit, but I managed to finally navigate my way to the artifact on day 67. Alrighty, check that one off the list. Now it's time to go get the artifact of the devourer. Devourer. Ugh. This was one of the artifacts I would need my scuba gear for, because it was deep underwater in a pirate ship. Well, sunken pirate ship. While I was down there though, I was targeted by this fish swarm and shredded to pieces. For whatever reason, this made me super upset. I had to make more scuba gear, and once I got back, I murdered that fish swarm and got the artifact. Next stop was the cave where the artifact of the cunning was, and this one had a really cool pirate ship. By the time I had actually gotten the artifact, it was day 68. Next up, to the volcano biome to get myself the artifact of the immune. Oh my goodness, there are so many of these things.
Okay. Now, the next caves were really cool. It was like this labyrinth, and it had booby traps that apparently would just spawn creatures on me. That was not fun. Not a welcome jump scare at all. I can't get enough. Back with another milk. Help! Help! Help me! Despite those nasty encounters, I definitely gave it a 10 out of 10 on TripAdvisor. Once I returned home, I found another baby bear waiting for me to claim him. Oh yeah, day 69, my favorite day. I paid a visit to the Skylord cave and retrieved it. After that, I went looking for a Giga so I could kill it for its heart. I needed it for the boss tribute. I didn't find anything, unfortunately, so I just went and got the artifact of the hunter and the artifact of the pack again. Wait, but Chufi, you already got those artifacts. You didn't need to get them again. Now hold your horses there, buckaroo. For all of those of you who are sticking around to the end of the video, I have a little surprise boss fight for you, just cuz. And for that, I would need all the artifacts and the tributes to fight Gamma twice, all right? So just, just, just settle down there. Day 70, I went and retrieved the artifact of the hunter for a third time. The rest of the day was spent looking for a Giga, which I finally found lurking around on the plains. Once I started attacking it, of course, it was eternally aggroed onto me, and it was really hard to maintain my stamina. At the very end, my lightning wyvern did so much DPS that I just barely managed to kill it before it could kill me. The first part of day 71 was spent healing my wyvern after that giga incident. While I was doing that, I had an idea, but I would need a breeding pair of rexes first. It didn't take me long to find a low level male and knock it out. Not too much longer later, I had found myself a low level female and put it to sleep as well. I returned to the male and tamed it and then named it XP Generator. I think you can see where this is going. While I waited for the female to get hungry, I went and raided the hunter cave for the last time. I would need four different hunter artifacts in order to fight the boss for different times. I returned to the female and tamed it, also naming it XP Generator, then went looking for basilisks so I could kill them for their scales. Oh yeah, uh, I also forgot to mention that the Ice Wyver Day gave me triplets. Most of this day was spent just hanging around the house, raising stuff, and building this wyvern platform so I could finally have a place to keep my wyverns. They were just sort of scattered all over the place. It didn't look very orderly. Day 73, I continued to build the wyvern platform and raise the kids. For whatever darn reason, centipedes kept spawning on my little island and attacking everybody, so I started placing thatch foundations all over the place. Hopefully that would prevent it. The rest of the day would be spent making superior and exceptional kibble. I would need it to tame mammoths later. Day 74, I finally finished the platform and began moving all my wyverns onto it. Now that that was done, I could start looking for a mammoth. You know the rules. High health stat, high melee stat. Ho oh ho, a max level. Don't mind if I do. It didn't take me too long to find a female breeding partner for the male I'd knocked out the day before on day 75. After I knocked her out, I went home and crafted some more kibble so I would actually be able to tame her. The rest of the day was just spent leveling up my ice wyverns. They're basically like fire wyverns, but not as overpowered. Moving around early on day 76 was a bit awkward because I had gotten a new keyboard and it was a bit weird. The rest of the day would be spent constructing this mystery shack. You want to know what's inside? Well, too bad you'll have to find out on the last day. Day 77, I organized my spinos because I'm not gonna lie, it was getting really chaotic over there and it was starting to hurt my brain. After that, I was just running around and getting as much stone as I could carry in order to make as much cementing paste as I could. Cause oh good gravy, those dire bear saddles were expensive. Day 78, I wanted more gunpowder, but my most effective method of obtaining flint was just my pickaxe, so... <sighs> I'd have to get an Enki. I know, they're not hard to find, especially with the high level, but... Ah, I was thinking I could get away without using one. Once I obtained the Enki, I went on a much needed flint run and spent the rest of the day crafting spark powder and cementing paste. Also a word for the wise, do not abbreviate cementing paste as CP in your notes because that won't look good if the FBI decides to raid your house. Day 79, I didn't forget about my promise about trying to tame the unique creatures on this DLC, so I went after a Dinopithecus. And with the Cynomacraps, killing its mates were kinda easy. As a matter of fact, all of it was a lot easier than I thought. Weird. Maybe I just got lucky. Nope, not luck. Now I've got a high-level female breeding partner too. Could it be? Am I actually getting better at this game? Once I returned home, my first batch of mammoths had finished growing and they were both female, so I just set them back to breed with their father. I know, it sounds bad, but they're all gonna die anyway, so it doesn't matter. I also bred my monkeys. Yep. <laughs> Day 80, I realized that I still needed squid tentacles for the boss tribute. 
Well, off to tame a basilo. For whatever reason, I just could not find a high level for the life of me until the very end of the day. Oh, good grief. Fortunately though, after removing the mantas, taming it was a piece of cake. A good chunk of time on day 81 was spent looking for a squid. I finally did end up finding this level 20 and it didn't take me long to murder it. When I returned home, I set up an S-plus hatchery so it would catch all the Rex eggs. Listen, I didn't need to pay too much attention to my Rexes, they were only there so I could slaughter their children. Therefore, the less effort I have to exert there, the better. Day 82, I raised kids and did nothing else. Day 83, I prepared to tame an Amargosaurus. I wasn't particularly looking forward to this, but oh my goodness, I had no idea what I was in for. I was also underprepared. I didn't bring any veggie cakes with me. Veggie cakes are important because you need them to actually heal your Amargosaurus when you start the hunt with them. But who needs to try and heal them when you watch them get slaughtered by the 16th pack of dire wolves in a row? Day 84, I'm still at it. Trying to tame one of these things with no heals is really hard, apparently. I always had Zappo on standby, therefore I was never the one to die, but man, I don't know how many of these things I was burning through. At one point, it was just hard to even find another one. Day 85, I essentially rage quit from this whole thing and force tamed one. What? No, no, all right. I know that sounds bad. Now hold on before you get angry. I wasn't actually going to use this one because I force tamed it. Oh no, I have a very, very different plan for you, my friend. But that would have to wait for the time being. For now, I would need to deliver all the boss tributes to the terminal. Hmm, seems I'm missing some shark teeth. Also, fun wyvern fact. Did you know that if you're using their breath attack and then you dismount, their breath attack hits you? <laughs> I will try to remember that. I spent most of day 86 raising my kids, but I also started a construction project for a very special somebody. I finished said project on day 87. Look, it's a cage! There you go, buddy. Now think about all the pain and torment your kind have caused me. While you sit there and contemplate your entire existence, I'm just gonna go get some more cementing paste. Day 88, I was reorganizing my animals once again. Man, this chaos, it just never ends. Day 89, I finally had enough bears to fight the boss, I just needed to give them some levels, so I went caving. This also would give me chitin for cementing paste, so it worked out. I did have a very near-death experience though, going back to the artifact of the pack cave, where all those centipedes were. Turns out they always respawn. I'm not even gonna lie, I have no idea how I survived this. I have no idea how the bear survived this, but we're not gonna ask questions, we're just gonna be happy with it. Day 90, I got lucky and found myself a blueprint for a ramshackle spinosaddle, which needed, oh goody, more no, no, cementing no, no, paste. No, no, no. Wait, 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 wait. I'm not even sure if ramshackle's gonna be enough to stop the Alpha Dinopithecus King, cause uh, I was using the spinos to fight the Alpha Dinopithecus King. Now that that fact had finally made its way through my thick noggin, I figured it would be a good idea to spend the rest of the day leveling up my spinos. Day 91, I set up a generator and some air conditioners so I could hatch my Rex eggs out in the open. This way, I had to exert minimal effort in order to walk up to them on a spino and slap the ever-living crap out of them. I also then realized that I would need to give my monkeys some more levels because I would be taking them into the boss fights with me. So I just rode one all the way over to the beaver dams to get some cementing paste and just killed stuff on the way. Day 92, I went into full-on leveling mode because I spent the entire day leveling my spinos and mammoths. Also, I didn't previously realize that harvesting wood with a mammoth gave it so much experience. Day 93, and I was caught red-handed in the beaver dams once again. Besides that, all I was doing was leveling up mammoths. Day 94, I was leveling more spinos in the swamp and you guessed it. Got more cementing paste from the beaver dams. Speaking of which, where are the beavers? I haven't seen a single one since I started this playthrough. Day 95, I crafted a whole bunch of cementing paste and completed my final imprints on my mammoths. And then uh, I got distracted by something in real life and then completely forgot I was recording until almost the end of the day. I guess while I'm sitting here doing nothing, it's a perfect chance to talk about today's sponsor, your mom. No, but seriously, someone give me a sponsor, I want money. Day 96, I was leveling more mammoths, but I discovered the funniest thing in the world, and it's called Slow Mo 10. Well, I already knew about it, but try putting it on and then leveling up a mammoth. This is the single-handed most beautiful thing I've ever seen in this game. Day 97, I was doing the exact same thing, but with spinos. It's just a different kind of funny. I don't know how to explain it. It was mesmerizing. A98, I was healing my spinos from their leveling sprees and finally, finally crafting the saddles. I can't tell you how much cementing paste this took. I should also mention by this point, I was really ready to be done. 
Arc is a lot of fun, don't get me wrong, but when you have to record 100 hours for a single video and it takes you a month to make it, and then you just kind of do it for months and months on end, then it kind of wears you down. Day 99, I had all my bears and monkeys ready and I was ready to fight Gamma. This one went a lot better than I thought it would. I probably should chalk that up to the Mastercraft saddles. Also, this giant monkey king was amazing. It threw giant poop bombs that blew up like real bombs. Stupendous. Also, as you've probably noticed already, I didn't make these boss fights very dramatic. That's because I didn't take them very seriously. Oh well, it didn't matter anyway, because as it turns out, Gamma didn't survive the vibe check. Let's see if the others do. Day 100, and now I was fighting the beta version with all my mammoths, and we were, we were getting slaughtered. Is it bad that I was laughing this whole time? I guess it doesn't matter, because eventually I got killed by a poop grenade. Name a better way to die. I will wait. Alright, now that I've got beta checked off the list, and not in a victory kind of way, it was time to fight Alpha. Alright, you guys, let's see what you can do. Hmm. Turns out, you can't do much. My death was a lot more violent in this one. I got launched off my Spino saddle and just got eviscerated by everything that was there. And I'm a man of my word. If you're still here watching this, I have a surprise for you guys. Alright, my little ones, are you ready for the real test? The real test of your strength and nerve? I bet you can do it. No, they can't. They're gonna die. Alrighty, guys, I got his attention. Okay, okay, so huddle in. Alright, so here's the plan. He, he's already there? That's a problem. Marty, I'm bored. I'm, I'm gonna kill you. I hope you enjoyed the surprise as much as I did making it. It was a lot of fun. Thank you for watching. If you made it this far, make sure to hit like and subscribe to the channel as always. Remember, if you help me hit 20,000 subscribers, I'll open a Discord to you guys. That's gonna be it for this one. Peace.